In this video, I have placed a GMO food list first to make it easier for anyone wanting to write this list down as I have posted it. You can listen to the video at the same time, but you may need to pause a few times. It's a big list. Genetically modified food. 80% of all processed food contain GMO. Rice, corn, and wheat, legumes, soya bean and soya products, vegetable oil, soft drinks, salad dressings, vegetables and fruits, dairy products, eggs, meat, chicken, pork, and other animal products, infant formula, plus a vast array of hidden additives and ingredients in processed foods like tomato sauce, ice cream, margarine, and peanut butter. Tomatoes, soy, dairy, cotton, oils like canola, papayas, sugar, animal feed, salmon, golden rice, squash, sugar beets, potatoes, aspartame. Aspartame is a toxic additive used in numerous food products and should be avoided for numerous reasons, including the fact that it is, it is created with genetically modified bacteria. Consumers don't know what they're eating because labeling is prohibited, yet the danger is clear. Independently conducted studies show the more of these foods we eat, the greater the potential harm to our health. Today, consumers are kept in the dark and are part of an uncontrolled, unregulated mass human experiment, the results of which are unknown, yet the risks are enormous. It will take years to learn them, and when we eventually know, it will be too late to reverse the damage. Once GM seeds are introduced into an area, the genie is out of the bottle for keeps. There is nothing known to science today to reverse the contamination. GMO crops, when first introduced, were supposed to be the answer to world hunger. The argument was that by developing pesticide and herbicide-resistant crops, farmers would be able to increase their yields and decrease their cost. This is not proven to be the case. Instead, bugs and weeds have become increasingly resistant to the widespread applications of these chemicals, leading to increased use of both. More spraying means more cost for the farmers, more damage to the environment, and more health concerns. The companies that develop and patent the GMO seeds are the same companies that develop and patent the pesticides and herbicides to which the unique seeds are resistant. Monsanto is the largest seed company in the world and is also the parent of Roundup. The history of genetically modified plants in agriculture actually began before we started keeping records. Farmers began by selecting stronger plant varieties for stock and weeding out weaker, less productive strains. Eventually, they started cross-pollinating plant varieties to produce an even healthier crop production. The history of genetically modified plants in agriculture actually began before we started keeping records. Farmers began by selecting stronger plant varieties for stock and weeding out weaker, less productive strains. Eventually, they started cross-pollinating plant varieties to produce even healthier crop productions. What changed in the last quarter of the 20th century was that scientists began selecting productive traits at the individual gene level and controlling the placement of genes in new crops. The scientific study of genes began in the 1860s when Austrian monk Gregor Mendel systematically crossed varieties of garden peas. He introduced the concept of a gene as a unit of heredity. In 1868, German chemist Frederick Messier discovered the substance we now call DNA. In 1976, scientists introduced human genes that produce insulin into strains of bacteria. Those bacteria started manufacturing insulin. Next, they manufactured human growth hormone, which was used to enable dwarf children to grow to a normal size. Before genetic modification techniques, the only source for the, for the drug had been human cadavers. Gene splicing technology entered the food industry in 1990 when the FDA approved the safety of a new strain of GNO, rennet. Rennet is used to curdle milk to form curds and whey, the raw material of cheese and other dairy products. The pharmaceutical giant Pfizer had isolated the gene for making rennet from the stomach of a calf and inserted it into bacteria. 
Monsanto invested more than $1.5 billion last fiscal year researching new tools for farmers. The company concentrates the vast majority of its research and development efforts on new biotech traits, elite germplasm, breeding, new variety and hybrid development, and genomics research, other research and development projects to support the company's current products, including improved formulations of Roundup herbicide. My link to Monsanto research documents contains more information about the types of chemicals being used by Monsanto scientists and their intended applications. The report includes GMO food production techniques. Monsanto is not just using viruses like E. coli and the deadly black death bacteria as what I call the gene binder. They are experimenting with radioactive waste for the same application. Monsanto is splicing nuclear waste into our food chain. Monsanto is responsible for collecting data for food irradiation research and passes the results on to regulatory government agencies responsible for food safety. The genes being implanted are from organs, thyroid, liver and kidney, as well as bone cells. The Monsanto companies that do this originally thought that each gene only expressed one trait and by doing this only the new trait would be introduced into the host plant. However, we know better now. Each gene expresses a whole slew of different traits and by splicing even one gene in you're introducing a whole ton of other uncontrolled unknown traits into the host plants and therefore into the food. The Union of Concerned Scientists accuses Monsanto of falsifying test results suppressing research eight ways Monsanto fails at sustainable agriculture number seven they have often refused to provide independent scientists with seeds or they've set restrictive conditions that severely limit research options. Monsanto corporations will only provide their data records for independent scientists. Independent scientists at regulatory agencies review this data and are responsible for reg regulating the crops. The only research which is permitted to be published in re reputable scientific peer review journals or studies which have been pre-approved by Monsanto and other industry GMO firms associated with Monsanto. Monsanto will tell you these foods are safe, yet testing in France resulted with different data. France has found genetically modified maize to have devastating effects on the health of lab rats, rats which could indicate risks for other biological creatures including humans. For two years, these rats were fed a diet of 33% genetically modified corn developed by Monsanto. The results are horrific. The rats developed tumors the size of ping pong balls, liver damage, and digestive problems, according to the study. Monsanto started out as a chemical company, and they still are a major chemical producer. Monsanto also conducts radiation experiments and is partly responsible for the data used to set legal radiation limits. The research data proves the exposure to low-level radiation is linked to many cancers, whereas high exposure is more likely to result in leukemia. 65 health risks of GMO foods. GMO potatoes damaged rats. Rats fed GM tomatoes got bleeding stomachs. Several died. Rats fed BT corn had multiple health problems. Mice fed GM BT potatoes had intestinal damage. Workers exposed to BT cotton developed allergies. Sheep died after grazing in BT cotton fields. Inhaled BT corn pollen may have triggered disease in humans. Farmers report pigs and cows became sterile from GM corn. Twelve cows in Germany died mysteriously when fed BT corn. Mice fed Roundup Ready Soy had liver cell problems. Mice fed Roundup Ready Soy had problems with the pancreas. Mice fed Roundup Ready Soy had unexplained changes in testicular cells. Roundup Ready Soy changed cell metabolism in rabbit organs. Most offspring of rats fed Roundup Ready Soy died within three weeks. Soy allergies skyrocketed in the UK soon after GM soy was introduced. 
rats-fed, roundup-ready canola had heavier livers. Twice the number of chickens died when fed Liberty Link corn. GMPs generated an aller allergic type inflammatory response in mice. Eyewitness reports, animals avoid GMOs. A GM food supplement killed about a hundred people and caused 500 to 10,000 to fall sick. Foreign genes disrupt the DNA at the insertion site. Growing GM crops using tissue culture can create hundreds or thousands of DNA mutations. Gene insertion creates genome-wide changes in gene expression. The promoter may accidentally switch on harmful genes. The promoter might switch on a dormant virus in plants. The promoter might create genetic instability and mutations. Genetic engineering activates mobile DNA called transposons which generate mutations. Novel RNA may be harmful to humans and their offspring. Roundup Ready soybeans produce unintentional RNA variations. Changes in proteins can alter thousands of natural chemicals in plants, increasing toxins or reducing polytonutrients. GM crops have altered levels of nutrition, nutrients and toxins. A gene from Brazil nut carried allergies into soybeans. GM proteins in soy, corn and papaya may be allergens. BT crops may create allergies and illness. BT in crops is more toxic than the BT spray. Starlink corn's built-in pesticide has a medium likelihood of being an allergen. Pollen sterilizing barnets in GM crops may cause kidney damage. High lysin corn contains increased toxins and may retard growth. Cooking high lysin corn may create disease promoting toxins. Disease resistant crops may promote human viruses and other diseases. GM proteins may be misfolded or have added molecules. Transgenes may be altered during insertion. Transgenes may be unstable and rearrange over time. Transgenes may create more than one protein. Weather, environmental stress and genetic disposition can significantly change gene expression. Genetic engineering can disrupt the complex relationships governing gene expression. In spite of industry claims, transgenes survive the digestive system and can wander. Transgene design facilitates transfer into gut bacteria. Transgenes may proliferate in gut bacteria over the long term. Transgene transfer to human gut bacteria is confirmed. GM foods might create antibiotic resistant diseases. The promoter can also transfer and may switch on random genes or viruses. If BT genes transfer, they could turn out our gut bacteria into living pesticide factory. Genes may transfer to bacteria in the mouth or throat. Transfer of viral genes into gut microorganisms may create toxins and weaken people's viral defenses. Glufosinate tolerant crops may produce herbicide inside our intestines. Herbicide tolerant crops increase herbicide use and residues in food. Tiny amounts of herbicide may act as endocrine disruptors. GM crops may accumulate environmental toxins or concentrate toxins in milk and meat of GM fed animals. Disease resistant crops may pr promote new plant viruses which carry risks for humans. Oprah.com reports, GM foods have been on the market only since 1994 and research on their long-term effects on humans is scarce. To date, most of the studies have been done on animals. Worryingly though, some of those studies link GM foods to altered metabolism, inflammation, kidney and liver malfunction, and reduced fertility. In one experiment, multiple generations of hamsters were fed a diet of GM soy. By the third generation, they were losing the ability to produce offspring. 
producing about half as many pups as a non-GM soy group. Unity Publishing would like you to know the results of their study, GMO foods making men sterile. Investigations show that genetically modified foods make animals sterile. Around 75% of our processed foods contain some form of genetically modified ingredients. Evidence already shows that men are quickly becoming sterile. If we do not stop this, humanity could become extinct. Food Matters TV Weekly article for February 8th to 14th, 2014. The truth is out on genetically modified food, and it's not pretty. This week, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine called on physicians to educate their pa patients, the medical community, and the public to avoid GMM foods when possible and provide educational material concerning GMM food and health risks. Pregnant women and babies at great risk, food designed to produce toxin, GMOs provoke immune reactions, animals dying in large numbers, dangerously few studies, untraceable diseases. First finding of all, GMO foods remain inside of us. The only published human feeding study revealed what may be the most dangerous problem from GM foods. The gene inserted into GM soy transfers into the DNA of bacteria living inside our intestines and continues to function. This means that long after we stop eating GMOs, we may still have potentially harmful GM proteins produced continuously inside of us. But more plainly, eating a corn chip produced from BT corn might transform our intestinal bacteria into living pesticide factories, possibly for the rest of our lives. Dr. Foxnet.com reports pet foods with genetically modified ingredients put dogs and cats at risk. Cron.com, dangers of GMO ingredients in pet food, posted November 16, 2012, by J.D. Ward. TheTruthDenied.com, breaking news, February 17, 2012, at 1.56 a.m., GMOs and your pets. Alert to all pet owners, GMOs kill. Pet foods have to be labeled. Look for GMO free in the ingredients list for each product. The final portion of this report is about irradiated food that is also flooding our food supply. In the early 1900s, patents were issued in the United States and the United Kingdom describing the use of ionizing radiation to destroy microorganisms in food. Back then, the, the technology was not commercially viable as the only known ionizing radiation source was radium and it was not easily available. In recent decades, more practical ionizing radiation sources have become available with the emergence of nuclear reactors. Cobalt-60 and cesium-137 man-made radioisotopes have been found to be considerably more effective than natural radium, so the US AEC released nuclear waste to US academic researchers. The International Atomic Energy Agency, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Health Organization, formed the Expert Committee on Food Irradiation in 1970. In 1980, the committee concluded that the irradiation of any food commodity up to an overall average dose of 10 kgy presents no toxicological hazard. Hence toxicological testing of foods so treated is no longer required. Monsanto is woven into the fabrics of these industry agencies. Monsanto provides a use for their industrial waste, performs regulatory testing for each sector, and is solely responsible for data collection, which is used to set industry standards as well as health and food safety regulations. In return, nuclear and chemical industries, along with the U.S.-Canada government, are Monsanto's biggest lobbyists. Last year marked the 50th anniversary of an agreement between the World Health Organization and the International Atomic Energy Agency. This agreement prevents the World Health Organization from investigating and issuing warnings about the risks of nuclear power, including irradiation on human health. 
edibledgardenproject.com. Health Canada explains food irradiation as the process of exposing food to a controlled amount of energy called ionizing radiation. There are three different types of radiation allowed gamma rays, x rays, and electron beam radiation. This process acts by damaging the food's pro product's DNA beyond its ability to repair. Therefore, organisms can no longer successfully continue the process of cell division, and the organism ceases all processes related to maturation or reproduction. Three main rationales are given by Health Canada for food irradiation to prevent food poisoning by reducing the level of harmful bacteria such as E. coli or salmonella, to prevent spoilage by reducing the microbial load on foods, meaning it destroys bacteria, molds and yeasts which cause food to spoil and controls insect and parasite infestation, and to increase shelf life by slowing the ripening or sprouting in fresh fruits and vegetables thereby allowing for a longer shelf life. We have been eating gamma X-ray radiation since 1970 and now radiation is also being genetically modified into our food chain without public knowledge. Corrupt industry officials have always placed more values on their profits than on human life and falsifying reports is just part of their normal operations. As long as they are permitted to continue to blindside regulatory officials and the public, these industrial monsters will eventually end all life forms on Earth. Cancers are already steadily increasing, and this trend is not likely to reverse. Soon to come, global water and food shortages. Global warming is a government conspiracy. We are still hearing media reports about global warming and the devastating effect it is having on our planet. Yet this term is a government invention used to cover up the lack of industrial regulation and the very real harm effects of unregulated global industrialization. The U.S. food irradiation list, bacon, wheat flour, potatoes, bacon, garlic, onion powder, dried spices, additional dried spices, herbs and vegetable seasonings, including blends, dry and hydrated enzymes, pork, fruits and vegetables, poultry, lamb, pork, and horse meat and byproducts, fresh shell eggs, sprouting seeds, fruit and vegetable juices, imported fruit and vegetable, ready-to-eat foods, molluscan shellfish, iceberg lettuce, and spinach, Canadian irradiated food, onions, potatoes, wheat, flour, whole wheat flour, whole or ground spices, and dehydrated seasonings. This report is meant to help people make informed choices. Whether you choose to eat GMO and irradiated foods is your choice. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.